Today's reading comes from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. It says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water Yield fresh. We have two wild and compassionate, funny and kind, generous and rambunctious boys. Sam is six and Luke is four. And I found that having children is kind of like having little mirrors running around showing you the very best and sometimes the very worst of yourself, right? They have their own unique personalities and characteristics, but they also have many of mine and Mandy's. Sometimes the ones we want them to have and sometimes the ones we wish they didn't. Shortly after we moved into our new house, the boys were playing in the basement. And in our house, there are light switches at the top of the stairs and at the bottom of the stairs. And so Sam thought it would be funny to turn out the lights while we're down there to try and scare Luke. After all, what are big brothers for? And usually this would result in some kind of fight or high-pitched scream from Luke, but not this time. No, this time we heard Luke say something to his brother that we had never heard him say before. Now listen, we've never had an issue with our kids' language. They've never even dabbled into the realm of bad words before. But if you know Luke, you know that he doesn't do anything halfway. And so he didn't dabble his toe in the ocean of curse words that exist out there. No, he went deep sea diving and went straight for the big one. That's right, he used a word that rhymes with the word ducking. So Sam starts turning off the lights and Luke yells, Sam, turn on the ducking lights. And Mandy and I are upstairs going, excuse me, as Sam comes running up the stairs yelling, Luke said ducking. So now both of them were in trouble and Mandy sat them down to try and explain why we don't use that word. And when she got done, she asked them, do you understand now why we don't say that? And Luke said, yeah, but then why does dad say it? Now I was the one in trouble. The words we use 
matter, right? Now listen, I don't want you to get the wrong idea of me. Obviously, I'm no saint. I've proven that many times over in my life, but I also don't want you to think I'm just sitting at home or out in public saying duck, 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 this, duck, that. <laughs> I don't do that. But you know that I was commuting the first year here at Zion. And I was no stranger to the commute. I had a one and a half hour commute to seminary in Columbus. I had a 45 minute commute to my internship in Salina. But the difference was I was by myself then. Nobody was listening when I'd be having a fit about the car driving 10 mile per hour under the speed limit next to the semi going the same speed. I may have a touch of road rage. And it seemed okay when I was by myself when nobody else could hear me, but for the year that I was commuting here, then all of a sudden I had four little ears listening to every word from the back seat, and man, did they listen. The words we use matter. And I don't want to get all legalistic on you and say there are certain words that you can't use, and if you just stay away from these bad words, then you're okay. Now, that's not how it works, right? If I said to someone, I ducking love you, that might make them feel really good. So it's, it's not about avoiding certain words. It's about how we use our words, how we use our words. It makes me think of that old rhyme we used to say as kids, right? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. To which James, in our reading for today, replies, Nuh-uh. <laughs> James says our words have power. Last week we talked about how James asks the question in chapter 2, So what? You say you have faith. Can your words save you? No. Only the word can save you, right? We looked at John chapter 1 verse 1 that says, In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, Jesus. This Word that has the power to save our souls. And so James continues on in chapter 3, saying, But your words still have power. Last week we talked about John 1.1, 1, 1, which mimics Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and in the beginning, God used words to create everything, to bring everything into existence. God spoke, let there be light, and there was light. And for the next 25 verses, God continues to create. God creates the land and the sea, the sky and the sun and the moon and the stars and all the animals, and then in verse 26, God says, let us make humankind in our image and according to our likeness. And if we were reading the Bible from beginning to end and all we knew about God is what we've read so far, then what we know is that God is creative. God creates with words, God builds up the universe. All that is seen and unseen, God creates. And so if all we know of God so far is that God is creative and we are made in God's image, what then might be the defining characteristic of us, of humankind? Creativity, right? We have been invited to join in on the continuing creation of our world with God. We have the power to speak things into existence, not the tangible things of our world, but things like doubt or insecurity, confidence or trust. With our words, we can inspire and build up or we can discourage dishearten, or destroy. James says, starting in verse 5, how great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world 
of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. With it, we bless the Father and Lord, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. And yet it is. This is who we are, isn't it? It's how the fieriest of words can come out of the sweet, innocent mouths of my children. It's how they could have learned those fiery words from the mouth of your pastor. It's how we can use our words on Sunday morning to praise God and then leave that space and use them to tear down our neighbors made in the image of God. How have you cursed those who are made in the likeness of God this week? How have you used your words to tear down, to discourage, dishearten, or destroy? It really ought not be so. And yet it is. So what can we do with our fiery tongues and the words they produce? What can we do with the damage we've caused? James doesn't quite get to that part in our passage today, but he has already told us. Last week we read in James chapter 1 about the implanted word that has the power to save our souls. And I pray that that not only means the power to save us from hell, but also to save us from ourselves, to quench the fire of our tongues and to reconcile us with God as co-creators of a world of love. Our words have power, but God has the final word, and it is a word of hope. How might you use your words this upcoming week to build up, to reconcile or repair, to inspire confidence or trust to co-create a world of love. Amen. Thanks so much for watching this week. At Zion Lutheran Church, our mission is to welcome all people, grow as followers of Jesus, and serve all creation. Just one of the ways you can help support or participate in that mission is by setting up a one-time or recurring gift online at zionlima.org or by texting the word GIVE to 419-224-9951. This ministry and so many others would not be possible without your generosity. However you choose to support or participate in our mission, I thank you.